happens is if your camera is too big, people just, they get nervous and they just say no filming. They don't let you film. And then it's really game over. Check that out. Yum. Hey guys, so today I am at Borough Market, which is one of London's oldest and largest food markets. So if you're into kind of, you know, like the outdoor food stalls, this is the market that you want to be at. A lot of you guys have actually asked me about how I vlog as well, so I thought that I would take this opportunity, because if you guys can see how crowded the market is, to test out this little guy. This is the uh, Rode Wireless Go. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it online as well, but I thought with how many people are in there, it would be a good opportunity to really test out like how this sounds in a real life setting. And if you guys want a full summary of my thoughts on the microphone, jump to the end. I'll provide you guys with a time code. All right. So uh, yeah, let's, let's get to eating. of Borough Market and to one side is really where you have um, the indoor shops so it's really pretty on the inside there's really nice architecture you can get like spices you can get beer on this side uh, behind me is where you can get more of the open food stalls so you can get you know like burgers or like uh, wraps different things right back there and yes they do have actually a couple of vegan choices so you guys don't really need to worry about that all right, so I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find we're going to find some food. So You know what I really hate? There's this um, German shop that does like um, it's not like a strudel. There's like it's like custard inside cake and I can never have it obviously. Okay. Usually there's a couple of vegan options and like most of the shops tend to have at least like one vegan option. So you're just going to have to look around, you're going to have to read the menu a little bit. Um, let's see, what do they have here? Uh, kimchi bao, we have the soy chicken bao. They don't have as much as what they normally have in their like um, restaurant menu, so. Balkan bites, vegetarian goodness. Um, if you guys can see down here, there's a potato and onion kind of like sesame flatbread, and that's vegan. Not that. That one has a vegan and a vegetarian dumpling, so that's pretty cool. Scotch eggs, most definitely not. Oh wait, this one's really cool too. This one has the vegan samosa. And nearly everything here um, is vegan or can be made vegan. So you have the doll. You have Indian street food. I've actually eaten here before. It's really, really good. So they have the mung dal, the chana chaat, and then, what's this one? The alu tikka chaat. So I think um, most of the things can actually be made vegan, vegan options. So I think I'll probably just get the mung dal dosa um, for six pounds, so. All right, so this is the mung dal dosa, and you guys could see that it, he actually had the mung bean batter right there, and he made this really uh, crunchy bit outside, and then he had like a potato filling um, inside, and if you guys can see, the salad, there's, um, there's chickpeas on the side, there's some of this like crumbly kind of crunchy noodle up on top, and then there's also some um, pomegranates, 
uh, and onions as well. So it all looks really, really good. There's all that nice filling. Break this in half a little bit. It's always so savory. The inside has all of your kind of like mashed up potato bits in there and it's really well seasoned, it's really well spiced. And then the outside um, mung bean pancake. The outside mung bean pancake is just ever so slightly seasoned, maybe with just a little bit of salt, so it's not too heavy at all. It's also quite nice, it's not like overly crunchy because once it blends in with the potatoes, it's actually quite good. Mm. Mm. There's some cilantro, just little like bursts of kind of like brighter flavors from the from the pomegranates. Mm. So I'm gonna finish up with this first and then we're gonna head over to the other side which is the indoor section of uh, Borough Market and then I'll show you guys around there. Oh yeah, to my pocket. that I started already eating this guy. Can you just check out how crazy, like look at how crazy flaky that is. It is nuts. So it's kind of like um, a cross between puff pastry and maybe just a little bit of phyllo dough. I'm just dipping it in this like hummus, tahini, chickpea sauce. The potatoes inside kind of have this like smoky, paprika taste but it's also um it's like sweeter as well it was sweeter than the filling for the mung dal it's quite nice okay so there's this side which is like the outside food side and then now we're gonna go um into the shops portion of it so whatever noise that you guys are hearing that thumping noise is because um we actually have the, the subway um coming over this and this is like the prettiest bit because it's like all like kind of bridgy and it's bricky. Most of the inside is done in the style of um, like 1850s art deco. So if you can like check out the ceilings, it's super, super pretty. I think though that there's probably less vegan -y things on this side. It's more of like a traditional bit. So you have your burgers place here. Um, I love I love this market over here because there's a ton of like mushrooms, fresh produce, uh, I guess things that you couldn't necessarily find in a normal grocery store. Um, there's like a lot of like imported stuff, so it's really cool there. stream is being in here because all of the light is like diffused and it's just super pretty so um Paya is here i mean pretty much it's walking around like there's like more foods there's like different markets there's a coffee shop out back there's a beer place as well 
so here you can find like a lot of beers that aren't in normal grocery stores, uh, usually because it's like foreign um, imported. So if you're interested in that, check that place out. Um, just a very, very chill market. It almost feels like you're in a greenhouse because of the roof and the ceiling and the whole ambiance. as well there's the uh, Prosecco spritzer Prosecco rosé lemonade and peach liqueur okay so this is pretty much the portion I'm right here so this is pretty much the portion of the market that's actually like a fresh fresh market so there were like eggs over there we had like seafood salmon um, mussels and everything over there like veal beef um, yeah it's not totally vegan friendly but it's really cool to see um, all of the stuff because it's really fresh it's shipped in every day and you can actually see the little uh, it's not the dock section but the receiving section from the outside I have sea urchins here um, mussels there try the mussels girls yeah try the mussels girls um, ooh on this side I don't know if you guys have again mention of the uh, British Bake Off but they always have these like giant kind of standalone pies so they have some pork pies here I definitely don't think any of them are uh, well they're not vegan but they're really pretty so uh, meat shops here I think that there's a Spanish shop behind us so if you're interested in like Spanish olive oils um, little uh, what am I looking for like paella pans there's that as well I guess what's really cool is like in the summer because in the winter they usually oh, can you guys get that so we're definitely putting this guy to the test so in the in the winter time there aren't always these like kind of um, uh, vegetable markets so now it's really nice because in the month of like May you're starting to see all of these other um, vegetables and kind of like fresh uh, fruit markets Ooh. I'm just walking past this the, the strawberry is so so fragrant all right so now let's walk on over to the other side where there are actually shops so I think that there's gonna be like a spice shop there's gonna be um, a tea shop as well so you can kind of come here if you're looking to get some souvenirs or some like actually like cool things for your friends at home it sells like this mushroom stall thing what is this i think he sells like mushroom oh it's pate okay Right. Hi. What's, what's your vegan pate made out of? Oh, so basically it's four different types of mushrooms. Okay. And then uh, cashews to kind of make a curd. Oh, cool. So like kind of butter. Can I try that? Oh, awesome. That's so happy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Mm. To be honest, I don't really remember what pate tastes like anymore, so that's pretty good to me. All right, tomatoes, what do we have here? It's like chili chutney sauce. Hmm. Uh, more cheese. Blue cheese, I feel like there's... You know how in America sometimes there's like a lot of Dunkin' Donuts per square mile of land? There are a lot of cheese shops here. tea to you all of these different types of teas that you can get you can also they also do um, hot tea so that you can drink and you can shop around while you're at it oh 
This place has the prettiest, like, little baked cinnamon rolls. They're so, so pretty as well. Everything's like nice, nice and glazed. I just wanna like take a bunch of pictures there. Let's see. Yeah, this one is at, I wanna say like one end of the market and it's the, it's called Spice Mountain. So if you're looking for like very in-depth, like Indian recipes, Ethiopian recipes, some kind of, you know, like um, hard to find African spices, you can usually find it here. So I think like last time I was looking for Burberry, um, but I'm not sure if I was able to find it here. Yeah, they have like all of these different types of like uh, black garlic salt, Himalayan salt, that kind of thing. This would be like really something really pretty to take as a gift. Hmm. Oh yeah. These spice cans, that's actually really useful for the like, plate because I like to make my own spice rubs all the time. So that's really cool. Anyways, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this tour of Borough Market with me. Uh, remember to stay tuned if you're interested in finding out more about this mic, how it performed, yada yada, uh, and that will be coming up at the end. Ooh, a truffle honey. Alrighty, so so I'm back from Borough Market. I have had a chance to listen to all of the footage and actually gotten a chance to use the, the Wireless Go a couple more times. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is sound and then afterwards, the, the ease of use. I thought that the sound was, from this little guy, was pretty darn good. Was it absolutely perfect and immaculate? No but did it do the job of segregating my voice in a land full of people? Yes, it absolutely did. And part of the reason that I picked Borrow Market was I knew that on, on a Friday was that I knew that it would be packed full of people. I knew that there was going to be a lot of background noise. I knew that there was going to be a lot of shouting. I also knew that once you went into Borrow Market, kind of that um, inside area where there were the indoor shops, that building is uh, traditionally, it is really hard to get reception in there uh, for, for cell phone, for, for Wi-Fi, for whatnot. So it was the perfect place to test something that was supposed to be wireless. After looking through all of the footage, this only skipped for like a, a brief little millisecond one time, and that was the time when I was um, moving away from the camera and going pretty far away, which Road recommends that you always have the mic and this mic kind of at the at a linear distance. You should always be facing it. But other than that, there wasn't there wasn't any skips at all. And I had turned around, I had turned forward, I had walked all over, and I was actually even worried about whether this would pick up just too much of my sound and not get the outdoor sound. While I want me in a crowd in a room full of people, I also want to be able to capture that external noise. So it was able to do both of that really well. I've actually been taking this on several trips with me, several other vlogs. I've been to you know other countries with this as well. I've used this a couple of times and it's always, the sound is always actually quite good. One thing that I know that you guys were going to ask is um, I never tried it with a lapel mic and I actually did try to do that. All right, so now I'm gonna try to, there's this, um, wired option here. Sorry. So I'm gonna pair this up with a wired mic. But I had forgotten um, to connect this. It needed a two prong and this was a three prong. So technically I had to connect it to one of these guys 
before putting it in. So it, it's a little bit complicated and I know that Rode has said that they might come out with just one lapel mic without any adapters for this. Uh, if you guys do have the Rode wireless um, microphones before, that plug is going to end up working like this. But otherwise, if you have the Rode one for your smartphone, you're going to need an adapter. So that becomes a little bit weighty and I, I would prefer not to have to use that in terms of portability. But let me just try that out for you guys right now. Okay, so if you guys noted from the Borough Market tour, I actually didn't find that there was a huge difference between with the puff and without the puff. Let me go ahead and try it with the uh, lavalier for you. So I'm... Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of background noise here. So I think, you know, it would be better if I had done this in the market. Okay. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna clip it at around the same spot. So I'm gonna clip it around the same spot so that you guys can kind of hear how a lapel microphone connected to this is going to sound. I'm wondering if it's going to be a massive difference in a room full of crowded people. So if I undo that right now, that will kind of give you guys another reference point as to with the lapel mic and without. So now let's go into the ease of use. I would say just how easy it is to use this system makes me choose it over other ones that might sound, you know, slightly better. So to turn it on, you basically, there's an on switch on each of these, then the transmitter and the receiver, and you just press them for a couple of seconds, and then you know that they've turned on because the transmitter turns blue like this, but then you also see that the receiver has this LCD screen, which is brilliant because it tells you the uh, the battery charge left on both the receiver and the transmitter. And it has this green bar that shows you the noise level. So in case if you weren't really sure whether this was on, whether this was receiving the signal from this guy, you can always see that there are bars, that there uh, is a noise bar going. That's pretty much basically all I need when I'm shooting, especially because a lot of the times I shoot you know, by myself, so I'm just able to check that everything's a go. If everything is working, the signal is picking up, then I'm also good to go. Each of these are, it's a little bit less than half an inch each uh, as a square, and I believe it's like 31 grams each. It's, it's virtually weightless. It comes in a pouch like this. So when I'm going out to shoot or I'm going out to vlog, I just need a small backpack. I got my Joby Gorilla Pod. I got, you know, like a really small camera and this, and that is my setup that I'm, I'm good to go and I'm able to get, you know, some pretty good sound and also some pretty good uh, video as well. In terms of the battery life, it lasts seven hours after it's fully charged. So for me, I've actually brought this out to four different shoots and I haven't had to recharge it once. This whole thing, just this clip, you just press it like this, it opens up and you slide it right into your camera. Same thing with, with your transmitter, just kind of press it like this. And just pin it onto your clothes. It's just super, super easy that way. In terms of how far you can go, I believe it is about a football field's long. So this guy can go a really long way, way more than I think most vloggers would need. And it still has a really strong and great signal. So this setup sells for, I believe it's $200 uh, retail right now. It comes with these two guys. It comes with um, this bag for you to easily carry it in. It comes with two uh, muffs as well in case if you guys did want to use that. Let me know if you guys have any questions for me. I definitely think um, I probably didn't answer all of them. So if you leave some questions down for me uh, below, I will try to answer that for you or do my best to, to find out about it. Yeah, I will see you guys again next time, okay? Bye.